Hello, welcome to another Carriage Works update. Um, we haven't had one in a while uh, and we've managed to go through most of the winter. We've got a lot of carriages through this year and we'll see some of them in a few minutes. We'll start off with our um, longer term project, which at the moment is Bodders Gatlan. Uh, we brought this carriage in in the middle of last year and it was stripped out by a volunteer, an Italian volunteer who kept, comes once a year for us uh, and he got it to a point where we could start putting it back together. Um, this carriage is liked by a lot of people, it's got the, the nice walnut interiors um, and it's got the very nice Pullman seats in it, but it needed severe, major work doing to it. Uh, the windows were leaking, the floors were rotten on the two ends and um, it, well, it just wasn't first class, not the first class that we expect and our passengers expect. So we've started by putting new windows in and the ceiling's been painted as well so that's now at a stage where we can work down from it uh, charlie's been working on all the internal work so he's he's fitting new uh, walnut paneling at the moment and he'll work his way up doing all that we're keeping the table brackets as they are because we like the the, the leg space and it the tables do work in this so we won't be replacing the tables the seats have had to have major work. Every single seat frame has had to be completely pulled to pieces and re rebuilt. So there's been a lot of work into those. They're probably the biggest expense on the whole of the projects on this. Uh, they're presently away with the upholstering firm uh, and they'll hopefully be back sometime next month. We have to have them back because they've got to come in through the window. They don't fit through the two ends. So we have to leave one of the windows open until we've got those seats in here uh, and then we can move them through. Our aim at the moment is to have the carriage moved through to the paint shop sometime late next month uh, ready for the outside to be painted. We'll still have internal work to do but we have a slot in the paint shop for it and the intention is to have it ready for service sometime late May possibly into June uh, all being well. Now the outside of Bodders Gathlin, as you can see, is, is it's been started rubbing down. Uh, they've got some repair work to do up on the hallways where water has obviously got round the guttering and gone into the end. Um, and we've had to take the whole of the roof off this one. Um, this one had got uh, insulation in it that was installed by the manufacturers 25 plus years ago. And it wasn't really fireproof, so we needed to have that dealt with. We've done the rest of it when we've changed the skin on the outside a few years ago, but the roof hadn't been done. While the roof's been off, we've had the opportunity to renew all the electrical work. So um, a few years back, this one had a, a bit of a earthing problem up near Ridley, and it cut through a, a cable underneath. So we've had no electrical um, connection at the bottom end for a, a good few years. So that's all now been replaced, as well as all the internal wiring. And that'll mean that when the carriage goes out, it will be in as good a condition as it can possibly be and should see a good 10 plus years before we got to do any more work to it. So uh, this is the North Wales Narrow Gauge Ashbury replica that's been built by a team of volunteers. Uh, they've been working on it for the last few months again, uh, every Tuesday and once a month we get uh, a small team of them come and do a few days. Uh, they've been working on the doors at the moment. So as you can see, they're all hung now and they've started work on some of the, the nice to haves on them, the, the tongue and groove on the inside there. Um, there's, there's door locks and things to sort out. And they've also now added the hoods above the doors. At the moment, Norman's busy working in the first class compartment. He's been busy doing the mouldings. So they've been started. Uh, there'll be some bird, bird's eye maple interior with um, a utility or sapili hardwood over the top of it. And then the seats will be sprung, much like the bowsiders have in them, as they are at the moment. The third class compartments are, as you can see, mostly ready. They're just requiring painting. So if there's any painters out there who'd like to come and help paint it, please do get in touch. 
Uh, and then also we've got to get on with the roof. Uh, the boards are primed, but they could do with being painted so they can be installed as well. So this is our machine shop extension. So the, the, new, the old machine shop will move into here in due course. Mentioned it last time. It's progressed since, since the last time. Uh, electricians have been in working on it a lot and we've had vol volunteers painting the floor. We've also had a group of college students uh, ca came in with uh, Dowie from the works and they drew up and constructed us timber racks, uh, which is quite an important part of the, the, the whole project because obviously we've got the timber here right next to where all the machines will be. Uh, so that's quite critical to us and the storage of our timber is, is again very important because we need to keep it in the best condition so that we can use it on the machines without any hindrance. So they've done a, a, a great job, it's given us quite a lot of storage and uh, yeah, it's, thank you very much guys, that's much appreciated. As, get, as, as I said, the electrical team have been in, they've put in the, dis the uh, distribution board for this part of the building and they've put all the trunking in it runs all the way around the building um, so there's drop points for every machine so this one here will service the planar thickness so which will be here uh, and then there's other drop points for all the others and isolators uh, and there's going to be a number of uh, 230 and uh, 110 sockets as well as the emergency stop system so they've got quite a big project here uh, they've got to do some alterations to the machines as they come across as well just bring them up to a higher uh, specification uh, you know, toe stops and things like that uh, it's going to take them a while so we don't expect all this to be fully commissioned until the back end of the year um, we've got the extractor and the lighting to go in as well so it's it's progressing it's progressing and uh, the, again it's all volunteer labor so if you want to come and help with the electrical team please get in touch with the uh, electrical team and any other volunteering you want to do with us. So I'm stood next to carriage uh, 125, the service carriage. Over the winter, um, we've been altering the pump outs. So what we've got at the moment is a basic screw thread plug in a pipe and the, the, the pump head itself will just sit in there. But it didn't create a very good seal. Uh, so you were getting air getting in there and it wasn't pumping the tanks properly, uh, which meant that guards were having to stand there physically holding it when they should be off doing other parts of their duties. So what we've done over the winter is, with the help of a number of volunteers, is actually install these in the top. Now these are a cam lock system. So the, the, the pump itself now has a, um, a cam head onto it. And you put it in there and you basically push the handle down and it locks the head against, against a rubber seal that will be in the bottom of this. And uh, it means that the guard can go off and do their other duties and the pump seem to be a lot happier with it because they're not pulling a lot of air through the system anymore. This one's got a bit of an issue. It, we can't actually put this one on because the wings on the head there are catching the bodywork. But what we're planning to do to the whole fleet, and we've already done it to 2011 this winter with it having come in, is to cut the head back and put an angled head onto it so that there's less strain on the head pulling, the pump head pulling the box on the end of the carriage. That will allow us to actually screw this on then. And um, that will be the last vehicle we've actually got to install these on. But as I said, we'll go through all the other vehicles, altering the boxes slightly as they come through for maintenance work over the next few years. So this is the next Talithlin carriage. Uh, its actual number is 25, I think, in the Talithlin fleet. Um, we've got it to the point now where it's about to go into the paint shop in the next day or two. Yeah, it's primed. The exterior is finished. Uh, the third class compartments are pretty much ready for the upholstery. Uh, we've got a whole host of components that are in the paint shop varnished up and ready to be installed. Um, they're just working on the running board at the moment on this and down the back end Ty's been working on the first class elements in it. So uh, we're looking at finishing this for the end of May as well, a bit like Bodders Gathlan and uh, delivery to them in early June. Uh, the underframe for the third one comes in later this week. So we'll actually be starting the third one probably in about three or four weeks time once this one's largely through uh, and a bulk of the work is done on it. Yeah, uh, again, I'd very much like to thank the volunteers because we've had a number of volunteers who've been working on the exterior of this, um, 
Chris and Tim and a few others who've put a lot of effort into filling and priming the exterior for us, which has been a massive help. So thank you. Uh, so these are part of the Talithling carriage. They're the first class uh, end walls that tusac has been working on. And uh, much like the first carriage, which we have pictures of, not very good pictures, but some pictures that he's been working to, they're, um, they're exactly the same style as the other ones. So there'll be a luggage rack attached here once it's been installed in the carriage and you can see where the mirror will go and then there's picture frames as well. These are now at a point where they need a lot more flatting down and varnish put into on them uh, so they're a week or so off going into the carriage and um, that then frees up Tusac to do other stuff on the carriage uh, such as the upholstery um, boards that need to be assembled for the, for the seating in it. Over here, we're already planning for next winter. Um, this year we had 2043 in one of the Welsh Island carriages. We did the exterior. It had to have major, major work on its roof uh, because it had got water, the, the sealant had failed and the water had gone in behind the gutter and up through the end of the ply and permeated along it. So it caused a lot of rot. Uh, so we put a lot of our attention into getting the exterior on that one sorted, which meant we couldn't do much to the interior. Um, so next year it will come back in and we'll be renewing the tables, which are looking very tired in it. They're actually made from MDF uh, with a faced veneer on them. So they've swollen a little bit where damp has got into them and, and other problems. So these have been made in preparation for next year. Uh, it just help us get through the workflow next year a lot quicker if we've got things like this prepped through the course of the summer. So that's these. Uh, we may do a set of seats for another vehicle as well uh, and probably another set of tables as well. So we're now in uh, 17 Road paint shop and we're stood next to carriage 17, one of the Bowsiders uh, built by Brown Marshalls. This one um, it's been getting a bit tired of late. Uh, last time we had it in, it had a revarnish, touch up and revarnish. This time we've decided it needs a proper, proper repaint. It's had a few issues with the doors. Uh, we've had a few faults off it the last 12 months where doors have been sticking and binding. So all the doors have been off it and they've all been adjusted. We've also stripped all the paint off the hinges so that they operate correctly. So at the moment they're just busy starting to put the paint onto it. You can see the, the, the undercoat for the end has been put on and the cream has been started on the panels. We're actually converting this one back to cream on the window mouldings, which is how it was when we first did it and it also how it was in the 50s, um, rather than having the Indian red that was there because it doesn't quite look right on the livery, um, unfortunately. But that's, that's a... By the end of the week, that should all be into the gloss cream. And then next week, we can look at masking off and starting the green on this one. Uh, and then they'll do the black. Internally, it's had some paint on the floor. There's a few holes that we've had to repair and a few bits of rot that have been dealt with, uh, mainly in the framework where um, bolts and fixings such as screws have gone through and they've rust jacked and they've caused cracking in the timber. So that's all had to be dealt with as well. Uh, as you can see, the doors need a, need a bit of paint on them where they've been planed and things to make them fit properly. So that's all progressing well. Uh, this carriage, unfortunately, is not going to make the start of the season, obviously, because it starts at the end of this week. Uh, we'll be looking at just after Easter, probably, with this one. Um, we have enough carriages available that 23 can take the place of this one for a while until we get this one finished so that we can make sure this one is as in a good a condition as possible before uh, it goes back out to be used. Well, we've had some winter staff this year and it's been a great help having the extra staff, the extra help. Uh, it's meant that we've been able to get through quite a lot of vehicles. So this one is actually the 14th carriage that we will have had through. Uh, and thanks to the volunteers at Christmas, we had three locomotives through the paint shop as well. Uh, Linda being fully repainted on the main, main loco uh, the Dina Shunter bill also came in for major repaint and we had the the s and T's moly something or other uh, I can't remember what it's called the blue one uh, to to remove some of the, the 
the bright garish red chassis from it and uh, bring it in line with the other line side locos. So again, a big thank you to all the team that have worked on that and thank you to the team in general because we've got through an awful lot of work this year. So now we're in a uh, 16 row paint shop and we're stood next to carriage 20. This is a Gloucester carriage and wagon bow cider. And you may notice it's not the same as it was when it came in. So we're just approaching the 70th anniversary of the society and the first trains. So we've decided uh, this one uh, it was rather an ugly duckling carriage. It's never been high on the priority list this year. We decided it would go green and ivory so it can join 17 for a few years to c celebrate those, those special, uh, that special occasion. And um, this is what you can see here. It's had an awful lot of work. Uh, when we brought it in, we weren't expect, we knew it was bad, but we didn't expect the kind of level of work we ended up having to do. Uh, it's had to have, all the window mouldings have had to be changed because most of them on the other side have got rot in them. Uh, and while we did that side, we did this side at the same time. The sill down here somewhere, I think it's here, we actually had to graft a new section of sill in there because that had gone very rotten and um, that, that, that's taken time to do. We've also renewed the balcony ends because this one gained checker plate balcony um, boards basically in the 70s and they looked awful. They, just, they don't fit with the, the period of the carriage design so uh, we've taken the opportunity to do that mainly because the balcony at the bottom end, the headstock had to be changed due to rot in it. Uh, the steelwork was very, very loose. So we've renewed the, the bottom end headstock and took the opportunity to add that timber work. We've done um, a lot uh, to the interior as well. Uh, the doors on this, for example, these were all varnished interior boards. Uh, we've painted them because again, that's the, the, the feel of the interior at the, of that period. Uh, they didn't have varnished interiors like that. Um, so that's what we've, we've done with this. The period we've aimed for for this livery is around 1958, 57-ish. Uh, there were various versions of this livery. There was a version without these Edinburgh logos on them. And there was a version where that was lower as well. Uh, also the hoods, you may notice, are green on this one, whereas on 17 we've done them cream. Again, that's a different era, slightly, so there's, there's differences. Uh, the downpipes are, are black on this because, again, they were black on, on the, the period we've aimed for on this. So there's a few differences between this and 17. Uh, and also, um, if you look through the photographs, particularly on the eye base, the, the, you'll see that the threes are all in different places. And there was a period where they had plates as well, so we've We've, we've gone with this, this period. So we've taken the opportunity to add these onto the, this carriage and onto 17 as well. Uh, they're quite prominent in all the old photographs. So um, there's pictures of them with Tannabalk on, pictures with them Penryn. Uh, we've done a selection that say Tannabalk, Penryn and Theath and, and the Woodland Wanderer. So they can be, there's a choice of being able to run various different ones. First class, <clears throat> if we just move to that for a minute, we've actually renewed the carpet in here. Um, it had got carpet tiles, which dates it to around the 80s. Um, they were very, very dirty, very tired, and just didn't feel very first class. So we've 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 done the, that, renewed that as well. So we're just trying to lift everything up a bit. And there's been a lot more varnishing work been done on the interior as well to bring the first class back up to what it should be. And uh, that 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 will give a better experience to our passengers. Right, so we've gone through the winter work. Uh, 20 is just about to leave. We've got Bodders Gatlin and the Talathling going into the paint shops next. We're about to start running trains. Uh, and this year we're offering a Victorian Explorer, uh, a Victorian Wanderer, which will use the Victorian set for a couple of months. As Soon as that train finishes, uh, the end of May, we will be bringing in carriage 19. Uh, it's the sister carriage to carriage 20, so again, it's a Gloucester carriage, slightly longer than carriage 18 here. But as you can see, carriage 18 looks beautiful, um, like it's brand new. Carriage 19 looks like it's had a hard life. 
Uh, we've been working our way through the Victorian carriages over the last few years. Uh, we've done the bug boxes, the, the, the two Birmingham bug boxes. We've done 15, we've done 18. We've got to do 19 and we're also going to bring in the curly roof fan this summer. So they'll both come in at the same time. This is going to need a lot of work. Um, you know, it's, it's badly crazing on this side particularly and it's going to need a, a, a big rub down, load of paint work. We think there's some door issues where the doors are sticking slightly so we need to do some planing and stuff. Service all the locks because we take the locks out every 10 years or so to give them a major, major overhaul. Um, and then we'll be having to do all the, the painting and the lining. Again, this one's another gold leaf carriage, whereas the curly roof fan is gold colour rather than gold leaf. But gold leaf takes a lot of time, a lot of work. Um, and we're very grateful to those volunteers that come and help us, such as Andy Williams. But that's the next job anyway. Uh, so if you'd like, again, if anybody would like to come and help, please do get in touch with this or any of the other projects going on in the workshop. We've got loads, loads where people can be used. Wait. Doesn't, doesn't need much to get her going. Well, yes. <laughs> It's not broken properly now. Can't yeah. still see the writing on the tube plate yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Um,
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.